Welcome! In front of me I have the Lenovo Tab M8 and today I will go over unboxing along with a quick overview of this tablet. Now to get started I'm going to quickly mention that this is the uh, Tab M8, the HD version uh, as in the screen resolution. And this is the Technically, if you're looking for like the actual name of it, this is the Lenovo Tab M8 third gen, so third generation, uh, with a Helio P22 processor or P22T processor, and like I said, the HD resolution. There's also a full HD uh, variant of this device. So instead of having a resolution of 800 by tw uh, 1280, it will have a resolution of uh, 1200 by 1920. So obviously will be better than this in terms of just strictly resolution but from what I can see that it's probably the only meaningful difference between those two. Now anyway let's just open this one up and see what we get in the package. Come on. So there is our device. It's a tiny little tablet. So I'm going to turn it on and move it to the side and just see what we also have in our the device in the box. We do have a cable. It's a type a to type C. So that's pretty nice. Then we got our charger. So this will probably be a 10 watt charger, I'm assuming. If I can find the. Oh, there it is. Yep, it's a 10 watt charger, like I expected. If I can get the. Go the camera to focus, you can see it right here, the little last thing that is written. Here we get another cable, another Type-C, looks a little bit longer, we get some SIM eject tool, paperwork, and a little dock. There we go, and I guess you can see that's basically all we have in here. Now let's get a look at this. So we have little pins right here, plastic little notches. Plug it in through here. No, wait. Wait a moment. Never mind. That's a micro USB, not a Type C. Did I see this one incorrectly? No, that is Type C. Not sure why they went micro USB Type C here on the device. If they just could have added Type-C on both of them and give you one cable as an example. A little bit disappointing, but I guess cost savings in all the places that you can. I'm just going to plop it on here. There is no magnetic... Yeah, there's no magnetic attachments right here, so you just kind of like flop it on here. And you have to shift it from the side to side to make sure that it is laying correctly in there. Anyway, let's just move over to the device itself. So as you can see, it's a pretty small device. It's only an eight inch display. Like I mentioned resolution of 800 by uh, 1280. So maybe bring it a little bit closer. Maybe you can see some pixelations on it or not. Should be visible at this resolution and this size. 
Now, with cameras, actually seeing this like squarish, weird moving pattern, that's just the way camera picks it up. It's not something that I see right here. Uh, but yeah, you can see uh, this isn't necessarily the sharpest display. Now, using it from a distance of like, you know, arm reach, you know, bend in like 90 degree, just if you hold it at the table while sitting at it, like I am right now, this looks just fine. I cannot really complain about it. But in general, if you're picking this and the price is barely any different, I would probably recommend going for the uh, Full HD version, which will have a better resolution. And other than that, it's basically the same device uh, with same kind of specs, just a better display. So we recommend going for that one. It will give you a crisper, sharper image in general. Now, moving on to the actual specs of it, we, like I mentioned also before, we have a Helio P22T processor. We have two different versions of this device, 32 gigs of storage with two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage with three gigs of RAM. When picking this, I would actually recommend going for the higher one with three gigs of RAM. This will give you a little bit of uh, leeway uh, while using it, so you won't have problem of apps just consuming uh, RAM and your device just kind of starting to work slowly because a single app might be using more than uh, than two gigs of RAM and obviously then the device just starts to kind of chug a little bit and slow down because of it. So I recommend going for at least their three. It's both cases I would consider this to be a relatively low amount of RAM uh, but this is technically what I would, I believe, consider a budget device. So keep that in mind. But still, even though it's a budget device, it can still perform pretty well. And just for that, I would recommend going for the 3 gigs of RAM, which will uh, ensure that you have a little bit more headroom for uh, some apps uh, before the device starts to slow down with just apps taking up too much of resources from the device. Now, let's see if we have any kind of expendable storage right here because the device only comes with 32 gigs of uh, RAM, uh, not RAM, uh, storage. So it would be pretty nice if we can actually, yep, extend it using SD card. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just pop in an SD card in here and extend it up to like half a terabyte. So you should be pretty good to go. Now, moving over to some probably more useless features like the cameras which come included on this device front and back. Uh, at the back, we have a five megapixel uh, sensor, which again, uh, it's just a really low resolution. At the front, we're looking at even lower one, which is a two megapixel. Now, personally, I think that they should have just swapped it around because if you're using this device, you most likely won't be using it for taking photos of like, you know, just walking around the streets and just popping photos here, uh, holding this uh, tablet in, in your hands, even though it's small, it's still not pocketable. So I believe if you're gonna be using anything uh, on this device in terms of like camera wise, you're probably gonna be doing zoom calls or stuff like that. And in this case, you would most certainly benefit more from having a high resolution camera at the front right here, rather than the back. Because if you're recording with the back, you can't see the screen yourself. So. Like I said, a little bit of a missed opportunity right here. This is a budget device and probably people will buy it for just like, you know, using it in a home, which defeats the purpose of a back camera in general, I would argue. Now, uh, moving on to additional uh, things like the battery right here. We have a pretty decent battery size right here at 5,100 milliamp, milliamp hours. Now this honestly could be even better for the size of this device. Just to kind of put that in perspective, this is a uh, budget device, some uh, Redmi, what was it? Redmi 12C. It costs about $100 and it already comes with a 5,000 mAh battery. Just to compare these two, uh, technically the tablet is basically twice the size while having almost the same exact battery size as this phone. So they could have popped in here a significantly better battery to make this device last longer, but I guess they decided to just cost, you know, cut costs at any place that they can, because this is a relatively cheap tablet. And honestly, I think that's basically all I have to say about this device. There's uh, not much more 
about it. It's a relatively low cost device. It obviously won't be super powerful, but for uh, just typical like browsing the web, just checking out your emails and stuff like that, it will work just fine. I had in my hand the M7, I believe it was, and the even smaller version of this device. And that, like I said, it wasn't a powerful device, but it literally costed like 50 bucks on, uh, on like I'm my equivalent of Amazon from where I am. So 50 bucks for a device uh, that still can run pretty well and can do uh, the basic tasks that you'd expect it to, like launch YouTube, watch videos, browse the web, check mail, uh, maybe do some like cloud streaming even. It will do all that without a problem. So honestly, I can't really complain about it. Uh, tablets, I, I would argue, aren't necessarily, don't need to be super powerful because you have other devices that, that have the power that you will need. So this is a good device to have like, I don't know, close to your bed when you're just chilling on a couch, you want to read some something on your uh, like tablet, like a book or something, you can throw it at it, have no problem. For the typical like casual usage, this is a fantastic device and also like really nicely priced. So even if you don't need such a thing, but you just want to have the convenience of having something that has a decent battery life, won't consume much of the power when you're using it, maybe you just want to, like I said, read a book when you're chilling on your couch, you can literally buy this for like a hundred bucks maybe brand new and for obviously a hundred bucks i or like i mentioned even the smaller version of this which uh, in used cases which uh, used meaning it's been used but it's basically in perfect condition fifty dollars i can throw 50 bucks at it and not even think twice about like maybe i want to use it so what it was just 50 bucks so Honestly, for the price that these come uh, come at, it's a really nice device just to have in case you're actually gonna need it. Or you, you maybe you will want to use it. For instance, you don't want to turn on TV or not TV, but maybe you don't want to turn on your computer to check something on the browser, uh, but you don't want to use your tiny little phone. So arguably, this is also a small screen, but you get the point. It gives you a versatility with a bigger display uh, for basically like super cheap price so for that i actually consider this to be a pretty interesting device and obviously you also have this little uh, duct that comes provided with this device so you can just plop it on here like this have it act as a as an example a digital uh, picture frame which i believe that's probably one of the things that people might use it for uh maybe watching some videos obviously it has a typical normal plug right here unfortunately like i said it's a micro usb uh, but it won't matter, it will still charge the device at, I believe, 5 watts. That's uh, what micro USB I think it's rated for max. But 5 watts will still be enough to, uh, for instance, watch Netflix on here and have the device still actually gain battery from just chilling in this kind of state. So, pretty nice kind of thing to have, I would argue. Now, with this being said, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.